Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. Man, have I got a cool show for you guys today. I think this might be my ultimate masterpiece of a strap that I've ever made. And it's going on a 2011 AP Audemars Piguet Millinery. It's uh, reference 4101. The gentleman, he's a subscriber, he's a customer now. Uh, his name is Alan. He lives in Southern California, and there's a tremendous backstory to this strap that I'm going to go into in the second half. And you're going to get to see me hand make this strap. We're going to go into some history into Audemars Piguet and the AP Millinery as well. So you're going to want to see this because I can't wait to show you the final product. Don't just fast forward and take a look. Watch this entire episode because it's pretty interesting. I also just picked something up. I'm filming this the day after Christmas, December 26, 2020. So Merry Christmas to everybody. And I apologize. I haven't had a show out in a couple of weeks, but I think you can understand. I had so many Christmas orders. Oh my gosh, uh, just less than a month ago, I had 32 orders in the hopper that I needed to get out before Christmas. I'm down to about a dozen orders that came in that they knew there was no way I'd get them to them by Christmas. So I had to sacrifice doing the show just to get caught up. And I think you'll understand that. So Merry Christmas again to everybody. Um, and I just picked this up, like I said, from my AD two days ago and i think you probably know what's in here i'm going to be unboxing it for my birthday my birthday's on new year's eve december 31st so dun 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 and i got the booklet that they gave me with it and so we're going to do the unboxing on this new rolex in the next show so again on today's episode you're going to see me hand make Allen's my masterpiece strap for his AP millinery and go into some of the backstory about it. Stick around after the intro, we'll get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. Audama Piguet, AP. What an amazing brand, of course. They're one of the big three, considered one of the big three. And uh, just an amazing brand. They've been around actually since 1875. The name came into existence in 1881 and just an amazing brand this is me going through the website on the 4101 millinery and um you know you can take a look at the specs rewind and go back but just an amazing watch it has this distinctive oval dial and offset uh you can see it right there the, the rotor and uh for the auto wind mechanism and the complications are just it's an, an incredible watch it just really is skeletonized just some great photos here of of the watch and i've seen some kind of conflicting dates of when the millinery actually came out eight 1980 81 or 1995 97. this is the actual photo of what Alan was looking for in a strap that he wanted me to make him all right and uh, so you can see it has this distinctive diamond pattern to it and um, he actually contacted me originally back in August mid-August of this year again I'm doing the intro here and the voiceover on December 26 2020 the day after Christmas so this is months has gone by and the backstory to this, you're going to be seeing me, you know, making the strap here. I'm getting ready to cut out. This is the lining, and you'll see me cutting out the upper, the shell cordovan. But, um, you know, so he, he contacted me, sent me that photo, and I said, yes, I can definitely do that. Um, and he ordered the strap in, in black Cremexa, Horween Cremexa. And... Um, then, then a little bit later, he emailed me back to see if 
I'd be able to do it more in a diagonal pattern, a little bit left to right because of the offset dial kind of leaning that way. Um, and I said, yeah, I don't think that should be a problem. But then when all was said and done and I started doing the tooling on it um, a while ago, maybe starting a, about a month ago, I noticed that it was just not going to be possible to get everything absolutely straight and perfect. And, you know, this is a perfect watch. So you want a perfect, perfect strap. And um, I contacted Alan and I said, listen, you know, this, this doing the diagonal, it's not going to line up top and bottom and really look good. You know, I've, I've cut out several pieces and that have just gone to waste. I can't tell you. I probably... Had wasted well over a hundred dollars in leather cutouts of just working and tooling the leather, and I did start with Cremexel, and then so much time had gone by. I thought, man, you know what? With this watch and everything, what I'm going to do is just upgrade them to uh, Horwing or Shinky Ikaku Shell Cordovan. So that's what I did. I, I think I told them initially I was going to do Horwing Shell Cordovan. And I put the two blacks together, and I was just like, wow. I mean, there's there's nothing like Shinky Aikaku. It's, it's the ultimate of ultimate leathers in the world. It takes a year to tan the leather, to process the leather in Japan. Uh, Horowing takes six months, so it's a whole another six months for Shinky Aikaku Shell Cordovan to process. And this is where I'm, I'm doing some of that tooling that I was just talking about in that diamond pattern and I had done that several several times I had so many wasted uppers that I ended up going through so Alan I think you know when you see this final shots of today the product today I think you're going to be very pleased because it came out pretty close to the picture you had sent me and um that's what I was pleased about. I'll tell you, you know, the, the amount of time I took. So, you know, the other backstory of this was, and the reason it did take as long as it did was, it started dawning on us uh, both that these lug pins, they're very curved for this, you know, distinct millinery watch. And I told him, I said, listen, they don't really just make <laughs> these types of extremely curved lug pins they do make you know 24 millimeter that's that's the lug width uh but they're nowhere near as curved as what i'm seeing and so i initially contacted the ap service department in tampa and got nowhere and then i contacted new york city's uh service center and uh i had emailed them and then finally, when I had called, I got a hold of a young lady who, to be honest with you, was absolutely no help at all. She's looking it up on the computer, and she said, well, everything's done in writing, but what I'm seeing is there's two different references of lug pins for this watch. We need the serial number. So I contacted Alan. I got the serial numbers. I tried getting back with them several times to no avail. It's like they didn't want to deal with me at all because they asked me, are you the owner of the watch? And I said, no, I'm the strap maker. And they're like, oh, okay. You know, just very, very pretentious. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I got a hold of Alan, and he said, well, let me see what I can do and get this. He lives in Southern California, like I said. And he drove all the way to Las Vegas to get these lug pins. <laughs> so, I mean, talk about... Working on this strap, man, um, and why it needed to be as perfect as I could make it. Um, so he sent me the lug pins. You know, finally I got them. I mean, it, it was a couple months went by before I got the lug pins. And, um, you know, so that's when, you know, I was able to get busy. And he was so understanding and so patient. I told him, listen, you know, I've got so many Christmas orders I've got to get done. And as soon as I'm able to really get caught up, I'm going to finalize it. I had, you know, worked on this actually a few different times. Um, like I said, I mean, I, I wasted a lot, of, a lot of time and a lot of leather early on until I knew what I wanted to do with the diamond pattern. So that's what took so long. 
And, uh, you know, I just really I appreciate your patience, Alan. I told him, I said, you're like a one in a billion because most guys, I think, would have given up, you know, a few months ago um, with, the, with the hassle of even just getting the lug pins. I mean, <laughs> to drive into Las Vegas to get the lug pins, man. Uh, talk about dedication. And yeah, I really thank you to all of you. You know, my typical turnaround time had been for a long time, two to three weeks. You know, and that's with me having uh, a dozen orders, usually in the hopper at any given time. And that's, you know, that's pretty standard for, for where I'm normally at. And even since this summer, you know, and I've talked about it in various shows, how Oshin had Oshin O'Malley of the Timeless Watch Channel had plugged me three separate times on three of his shows. Um, and that's that's when <laughs> the tsunami happened, and I was never able to truly get above water again. Um, I had at one time I had get this I had I think it was in the end of July. I had 64 watch trap orders, 64, and at one time, I was so overwhelmed that uh, you know, and I'm not the kind of guy that gets stressed out. You know, I'm running a hearing healthcare company. Uh, you know, I have, of course, Michael Knapp Leather. I'm doing the YouTube channel, but you know, I'm just a super busy guy, and I, I'm not the kind of guy that I would say normally gets stressed out. Here's me doing the saddle stitching. And when I got back from vacation and I had all of these orders, our summer vacation, we went up to the Outer Banks and and Ocean had been plugging me and orders just kept flooding in and flooding in and I'm raising prices, raising, I had to, you know, it's just supply and demand. I mean, I think the pricing had been set a little bit too low or I was, you know, getting so much orders and it just, I had to raise prices. I didn't want to, but I had to. So um, it did kind of help to curve slowing down, though they kept coming in. And one day I'm just sitting out on my front porch. Here's the final product. <laughs> Isn't it sweet? And my wife comes out and she goes, what are you doing? And I said, man, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, and she goes, listen, you just got to start with the first one, you know, and just get going. <laughs> I said, you're right. I mean, I knew she was right. And... Um, you know, I, I, I honestly have not slowed down since. You know, that's and I knew with Christmas coming, I was going to have to buckle down. So I had taken some time away from the clinic, and again, I apologize. I had to just take time away from doing the show to get caught up. I just had to. So, like I said, here's final product. This is the reverse side, the lining side. It turned out gorgeous. And like I said, I think this is probably the best strap to date I have yet made um, with the tooling involved and all of the specs involved with this watch. It has a taper from 24 millimeter lug went down to 22 there at the buckle. That, I believe, is a temporary buckle. He ordered a black buckle, but I think he's uh, putting on an AP deployment. I, I, I believe that's the case. But check that pattern out. It turned out great. The stitching. I got, there's one little spot right there at that point where there's that little bit of a stretch going from the opposition. But it's really not visible until you get a macro <laughs> lens on there. This is how it's ready to be shipped right here. So thank you again, Alan, for the order, your patience, and also everybody else. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. It's good to be back. I really just thank all of you guys. I had a lot of fun with this trap. God bless you all. And until the next show, I'm not sure exactly when it'll be, but hopefully my birthday. Keep on ticking.